make it complicated. Start simple. <laughs> One blue scale and a bit. Simple bebop in a realistic tempo. Short form, easy scales and chords. Play these three solos and learn great swing, basic chord and scale material and jazz rhythm. Throughout this video, I'll give you tips on how to learn these solos, what's important in the solos, and how to use the material in your own playing from the solos. Let's go! My jazz journey started when I bought a saxophone. Saxophone. Yeah! I pretty quick got into a jazz band <laughs> and started learning jazz. First question was, how does jazz sound? I went to the nearest biggest city to get some records on jazz. I had no clue what to buy, so my best guess was CDs with the cover that had a saxophone. I listened and I listened a lot to these records. The one that struck me the most was Dexter Gordon's Misty. Maybe it was just because it was a slow tune and I thought I could get it. I cannot remember. I learned the notes, the tones by heart, but I had no clue of what I was playing, what, what chords, what scales, nothing. I just played this melody, the notes and the length. That's it. I was still totally lost on how to learn jazz. Totally lost. I found out in my learning that I learned the hard way exactly opposite of how I think you actually should learn the best way to learn. If you're a beginner, take this video, check it out and learn the steps on how you can learn jazz the best and the fastest. The first solo. Rather early in my saxophone career, when I was buying records uh, with the saxophone on, I found this record, a uh, Verve album, a compilation album with Sonny Stitt. Of course, Sonny Stitt was playing crazy fast and I couldn't follow anything. So basically I put it back on the shelf for a long time. But I refound this record again years later and first, Five, seven years back, I rediscovered this track, Walking. Walking is a rather simple blues form, 12 bars, normal blues in G. The crazy amazing thing is, Gene Ammons takes the first solo and plays only the blue scale through the whole first chorus of his solo. And through a slow build-up, he gets to chord notes and scales throughout his five, six, seven, eight rounds of solo. Why you should check out Gene Ammons, he plays with impeccable rhythm. His timing is swinging like crazy. And he plays really simple lines which all make sense. These are the things you will pick up when you play along with Gene Ammons and this solo on walking. Do it. The simplicity of Gene Ammons' solo is clear throughout the whole solo. And what I mentioned earlier, take the first round, it's only this blue scale. First time he actually hits a chord note, so a real chord note outside the blue scale, of course the chord notes in the blue scale, but a real chord note, the B. third bar in the second round of his solo. And for the rest of the time he builds up adding a chord note here and there, adding the major blues scale, adding that little beautiful 251 A minor D7, but basically through the whole solo he stick to the blues. One tip on playing solos. When you are playing along with the solo, trying to learn a solo, don't go in one go. You, you don't need to play the whole solo in one go. Take bits and parts out of it. You will eventually learn the whole solo. When you have small parts, you can add this to your own playing really fast and use it much faster instead of learning the whole solo and then start to use it. Another little tip, get the transcriptions I have made here in this lesson on my Patreon channel. So go check that out, links in the description. <laughs> Dig this of Hank Mobley sounds much more complicated than the Gene Ammon solo. But remember,
remember, this is not the first solo you're going to play by ear. It's the second one, so you're already used to play a lot of solos by ear. And it's also not John Coltrane on Giant Steps. Dig This is a blues in C. Also a blues. It's very, very nice to play two of the same tunes. This is in another key, but it's very nice to have the same build up. And as with Gene Ammons, there are so many things that makes Hank Mobley a very, very nice soloist to transcribe and play along with. To mention a few, Hank Mobley plays very clear lines. With a bit of basic theory, basic knowledge of scales and chords, you can really find out everything that Hank Mobley is playing. The timing of Hank Mobley is not in front, it's not laid back, it's right on the money. No trouble there, it's just right on the money. Nice timing to follow when you're playing along with someone. And there are no difficult runs that are really impossible to play. Hank Mobley has also really nice steady swing, which plays the eighth note right in the middle. It's very, very great to follow, describe and play along with. One tip, a very important lesson to learn when transcribing is taking out parts of solos and putting them into your own playing. <laughs> This starts with recognizing what you need to put where. Give it a name. Like this, the C bebop scale he plays in bar 3. And realize that you can put this bebop lick on all the chords in the whole blues form. So this great tip. What I still do when I transcribe solos, when I listen to a line, find out what it is, give it a name and put it into my own playing in places where I make it fit. Define your solo building blocks. The famous Dexter Gordon solo on Blue Bossa. <laughs> third solo on the list of tunes you should transcribe and learn first. With a nice easy tempo of 170-172, it's not too fast. The 16 bar form makes it easy to overview. The chord scheme has a lot of repetitions. Use this, a lot of repetitions in the chord scheme. Through the solo, Dexter Gordon plays a lot of notes and also uses some alterations. But his lines are very clear and mostly inside the basic scales and basic chords. Before going into this quite intense endeavor of learning a whole solo, I really believe you should learn your basics first. So learn the melody of the tune you're transcribing. Learn the chords of the tune you're learning by heart. And learn the scales of the tune. Melody, chords, scales. This will really make the learning of a tune very, very, very much easier. If you already checked out the Dexter Gordon solo or you want a little backdoor in there, I have made a simple solo manual which you can use to get into Blue Bossa soloing. Can we build it? Yes, we can! That fix, that build up, we can go on. Dexter Gordon was an amazing player. An amazing soloist. Some of the most amazing things in his soloing is his articulation and his timing. Dexter Gordon played with a huge tone. He was a big guy and his amplitude was all out there. So he's just blowing through that horn. Further, his articulation, he was articulating almost all the notes with his tongue. This gives a very clear and defined timing. And some of the things you will encounter in the Dexter solo, some of the more advanced melodic ideas happens in bar 49 and 50, where he's starting to play triads, triad patterns. And in bar 57 to 60, he plays motif playing, repeating motifs. And in bar 93, 94, he plays some very simple alterations you need to check out. And of course, all the links I've made here are available in the description, so the transcriptions of the solos and, and the concert in Copenhagen. I'm only touching the tip of the iceberg here, so when you get into this, you really feel that these solos become your material. You will get better with so big steps so fast. Start learning solos by heart. Do you agree that these are the three beginning solos? One, Gene Ammon solo on walking. Two, Hank Mobley solo on Dig This. Three, Dexter Gordon solo on Blue Bossa. What would be your top pick? Which three solos would you learn? Let me know in the comments below. 
Remember to find me on Patreon and subscribe to my videos if you really like them. And it means I can continue making these videos with your support. Do you have questions? Fire away in the comments below. Remember to hit the like, subscribe, share button. It's very much appreciated. The last thing there is to say is play music and have fun.